Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope from DayForGoodLife.com and today's video is going to be all about drying flowers. And I'm happy to say that I'm doing this video and the blog post in collaboration with two other great bloggers who have channels here on YouTube. Laura from this House of Dreams and Anya from Our Gabled Home. And we are collectively doing posts and videos um, all about savoring the summer garden. So after you watch this video, please go check out their blog posts and videos. I will leave their information down in the description box. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Since I was a young girl, I have enjoyed tucking the occasional buttercup or leaf between the heavy pages of my great-grandmother Nani's massive old Birds of the World book. Um, and several of my larger reference books will occasionally let their slightly crispy, antiquated specimens slip out onto the floor for the unsuspecting page flipper. But I have not moved much past pressing flowers in books in the preservation department so i'm excited to try these methods and share them with you so we can both see the outcome the five methods that i'm going to be trying are oven drying silica gel preserving pressing ironing, and air drying or hanging.
So for oven drying, I took some parchment paper and lined a baking sheet. Um, and I set my oven at the lowest setting it would go, which for mine was 170 degrees. And I baked the flowers, um, checking frequently to make sure that they weren't burning. They held their shape really nicely. The marigolds turned out very well, but the zinnias became completely brown, which was interesting. So I think this is definitely a method I will experiment more with, different varieties. I think it just depends on what type of flower we use. So the next method is ironing. So again, I'm using parchment paper and I have my iron ready to go. If your iron has a steam function, either turn it off or you can empty the water res reservoir. And with this, I went with sort of flatter blossoms, um, so cosmos and a little tiny mini sunflower that I had. And you just wanna carefully lay them out because how you press them, that's the shape they're going to take. So carefully lay their petals out how you want them. Sandwich them in between the parchment paper and then carefully press. I used a book to press them, to pre-press them. And then you carefully press with the iron, not really rubbing back and forth at all, just pressing down gently. This is an interesting method. Um, I think it would be good to use if you wanted pressed flowers quickly, like within a you know, that day or the next day. Um, pressing with a book or a flower press takes a little bit more time. So this way you can have a pressed flower very quickly. All in all though, I did notice you lose a little bit of the integrity shape and color a bit of the flower compared to um, pressing in a book or a flower press, as you will see here in a minute. So now we're moving on to pressing with a book or a flower press. This is my Nani's Big Birds of the World book, and I've got my trusty parchment paper. I'm trying a zinnia and um, a little mini sunflower, a cosmos, and a little sprig of hydrangea. And again, you just carefully lay the petals how you want them because that's how they'll stay. Carefully close your book up. I placed it under something heavy for about a week, and this was the result. I was really tickled with how these came out. Aren't they pretty? I especially love the cosmos and the hydrangea. The Xenia was a fail. Um, it was just too fat, I think. It became a little bit kind of gunky and a little moldy. So I would not do such a fat flower again. Here's my little flower press. I actually found this cute little flower press at a thrift shop. Really, you get about the same result as with a book. But with a flower press, you're more in control of applying the pressure. You don't have to search for, you know, heavy books or place, you know, rig up some kind of stack to add the weight. The screws um, clamp it down as tight as you want it. So you just lay them in there, the same as you would a book, very carefully, and you reassemble your flower press. And I squeezed it down as tight as it would go. Oops, I had a, I had an escapee. Get back in there.
So same as with the book, I left these in about a week and I was very happy with the results of this as well. Okay, so now for air drying. This is very simple. Your two options for air drying are placing the flowers in a dry vase and uh, also you can bundle them up like I'm doing here and hang them upside down and just let them dry naturally. This gives a very um, kind of natural rustic look. Some flowers dry better this way than others. Um, they do lose a lot of color. They get very brittle and crumbly as do all dry flowers, I guess, but um, they still have kind of a beauty. Okay, so on to an exciting one. This is flower drying with silica. And silica is like those little granules you sometimes see in a vitamin bottle. It just absorbs moisture, so you can buy it online. I got um, a bag of it. Amazon. I'll link it down below for you if you're interested. But when you're working with silica, you um, probably would be best off to wear a mask and gloves. You just don't want to be breathing in any kind of fine powder. So I'm using a plastic container with a lid. And the first thing I did was pour a thin layer of the silica on the bottom of the container. Basically the concept is you're just wanting to carefully bury the flowers in the granules for a few days and this pulls the moisture out of them. So I laid a thin layer down. Um, I saw this done on a couple different blogs and I thought I would try it. I put down some mesh like tool that you can get in the fabric department and it was supposed to help me get the flowers out of the silica without having to kind of dig around in there for them. So a lot of them I cut the stems off and I placed them in there and then I simply poured the rest of the silica over top of them. And this method preserves the color and the shape beautifully um, with a lot of flowers I've seen and it works this way with specifically the marigolds that I did you really can't tell the difference between fresh flowers and silica dried flowers um, I would like to try maybe um, a dahlia with this method I think that would work really well I just I didn't have one at the time but I went with zinnias and marigolds so I was just carefully covering the flowers, trying to make sure that the silica was in between the petals and all around the flowers, keeping their shape. And then I just kind of covered the whole thing up and I put it up high out of reach of children and pets up on a shelf and I waited about five days. So here it is five days later. This was exciting, kind of like digging for treasure. The mesh did help. I felt like it jostled everything around so that I didn't have to stick my hand down in there and dig around and break, potentially break the petals. They are very brittle. But see how the marigolds just they almost look just fresh. You can't even tell. And they everything holds its shape so nicely. This is a really fun method. I will definitely be trying again. The nice thing about the silica gel is that you can use it over and over and over and over again. So I'm just going to keep it in that box and um, try different varieties. As you can see there, I did try a little bit of a rose and it did not work, it just kind of fell apart. And last but not least, I did a bundle of hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are probably my favorite flower to dry. So that bundle is the one you just saw me pick and 
they dried very quickly, they were ready to dry. So that's the key with hydrangeas, is picking them when they're ready to dry. So the bundle on the right is actually over a year old. They last a very long time and they stay so beautiful. So the right time to pick them is after they've been on the bush for a little while and they start kind of naturally drying. That's when you want to pick them. If you cut them too soon, you will um, notice that they will just want to wilt right away. So definitely wait a little bit and probably down in the summer, August, uh, August, September, you're not going to be wanting to pick your hydrangeas to dry them before then. So give them a little feel and if they're starting to feel like they're drying on the plant already a little bit, that's the perfect time to clip them and bring them in and you just put them in a dry vase and you wait a day or two and they will be good to go. So thank you so much for coming along with me on this flower drawing adventure and I really enjoyed it. I hope you got some useful information out of it. Please like this video, subscribe if you're interested in my content, and I will see you in my next video. Bye friends!